So in this gas law problem, you see this word initially here, and then you see final. So if we have initial and final conditions, you know it's going to be the combined gas law or some version of this. So if we look at what we're given here, we have atmospheres. That's our pressure, liters, volume, Kelvin. That's our temperature here. We reduce the pressure and the volume's increased, and we want to find that final temperature. So I can just put all these numbers into the equation. We have atmospheres, liters, and then temperature, that's in Kelvin, that's where we want it. Let's just put them in, see what happens. So I put everything in here, and I think what I'll do, now I just need to get T2 by itself, but I want it to be on top. So I think what I'll do is I'll multiply both sides by T2, and that way these cancel out, and I have it on the top over here. Let's get rid of that. Now I can multiply both sides by 273 Kelvin. That would cancel it out over here and have it up top on this side. And then I can divide both sides by this here. That would cancel it out on this side. And over here, now I'd have T2 all by itself. Then I would just do the math. So that's one way to do it. Kind of the long way, but it really shows you the thinking, the mathematical thinking that we're doing here. Now you should note atmospheres on the top and the bottom, liters top and bottom, liters, and we have Kelvin. That's what we're looking for. So you know you did this right when everything cancels out. If you multiply the top and then the bottom, then you divide what you have for the numerator by the denominator, you end up with 331 Kelvin. And actually we have two significant digits here, so you might call it 330. But that's it. That's how you solve this combined gas law problem. This is Dr. B. And thanks for watching.